my name is Tia and if you have been to my channel before you might know that most of my books are thrifted I typically get them from eBay Goodwill library sales little free libraries I have acquired several books over the last few months and I think the way that I have acquired them is what makes it fun for me like it's not that I just bought books like not that there's anything wrong with that but like I found these books and that makes it so much more fun so I wanted to share that with you guys so we're gonna start off with the books that I found at little free libraries <laughs> there is an app you can find your own local little free libraries if you're in America I acknowledge that I'm very lucky I feel like I find a lot of good stuff at little free libraries I always make it a point to return a book to little free libraries I'm just paying it forward you know so I was so lucky. My most recent find, I found a brand spanking new copy of A Darker Shade of Magic by B.E. Schwab. <laughs> I know, I was gobsmacked. It even had like the Target sticker still on it. B.E. Schwab wrote The Little Life, no, The Little Life. <laughs> No, they didn't. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which I really love. And I've heard really good things about the Shades of Magic trilogy. It is a dazzling world of parallel Londons where magic thrives, starves, or lies forgotten, and where power can destroy just as quickly as it can create. I'm not really a fantasy gal, but like with the parallel Londons and like the magic system, I don't know, I'm definitely really intrigued. So I'm super excited about this one. <laughs> in another free little library at another trip, like just when I was out on a walk in my neighborhood, I found Adelaide by Geneve Wheeler. And it's actually an arc. It seems more about self-love or probably platonic love because it's about like a toxic relationship. When love asks too much of us, how do we find the strength to put ourselves first? It explores the grief and mental health while capturing the timeless nature of what it's like to be young and in love with your friends, with your city, and with the person who cannot and will not love you back. I actually already started this granted I'm only 20 pages in but I am really enjoying it like I think the writing is so easy to fall into and this is a debut novel so that's really cool okay and the most exciting find <laughs> I was gobsmacked not only is it fourth wing but it's like the Costco version <laughs> It's like the special edition. The joy of finding a really, I guess not popular book, but like a book that you are really excited to find for free, unmatched. It's up there with the elation you feel probably on your wedding day, I'd assume. <laughs> The person who put this in there, you know what I mean? Like they are so big hearted because they could have sold it. They could have, you know, kept it for themselves. They made my day with this donation. This is gonna stay in my collection forever, I think. I remember when I found this and that's always a good feeling. Next, we've got books that I actually purchased with my own money. Most of these are from used bookstores and my library sale besides this one. The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I decided to buy this new which I don't usually do. <laughs> if I love a book and I want it in my possession, I will usually wait for a sale, but there was not even a sale, babes. I just needed this in my hands. I was listening to this on audiobook for my library and I was just giggling, kicking my feet the entire time. I was screenshotting like what percentage of a quote that I like, which is just ridiculous. How am I supposed to know what 46% means? So I just decided before I finished the audiobook, I really wanted to annotate it. It was a solid five stars for me. And if you watch my worst books of 2023, one of her books was in it I just really didn't vibe with the dead romantic so I went into this like kind of hesitant and with reserve but that's when I feel like all the books that I go into like that surprise me in like a very positive way I really enjoyed this and I will talk more about why in my March reading wrap up and then at my beautiful 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 library I love my library I found two books one of them being Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This is the Barnes & Noble's exclusive edition. Someone, some precious soul already took the sticker off for me so I didn't have to worry about that. And it was three stinking dollars. <laughs> this is what I live for. Like this is what, hi hero. Just stepped over my books. It's just so fun finding really exciting finds and then getting them for dirt cheap for $3. Do you want to sniff? Thank you. <laughs> 
that just makes me so happy. Like again, finding the book cheap like that serendipitously is like half the fun. And then the other half of the fun is like reading it and then hopefully enjoying it. I love this cover. I think it just looks so stunning. And I've heard nothing but really good things about this one as well. I think this was a lot of people's 2023 favorites. A professor studies fairy folklore and discovers dark fae magic, friendship, and love in the start of a heartwarming and enchanting new fantasy series. So it sounds like cozy fantasy. So I am excited. And this book, Inheritors by Asako Sarazawa. I actually bought this in my video where I thrifted books. You can see that there. I unfortunately lost the footage of me like actually talking about it and like me finding it, which sucked. But this just really piqued my interest at the library. A kaleidoscopic portrait of five generations scattered across Asia and the US. It's a heartbreakingly beautiful and brutal exploration of a Japanese family fragmented by the Pacific side of World War II. The myriad ways in which we live, interpret, and pass on our tangled histories. Wow. I really enjoy a good historical fiction with a lot of heart in it. So this sounds so up my alley. I was really stoked. And again, three buckaroonies. <laughs> And my parents are first generation immigrants. So I just think stories like these really hit home for me and have just a deeper meaning. And so I'm very, very excited to get to this. This book kind of makes me sad. So a few months ago, I think like way back in 2023, I did pick up Sharp Objects by Jillian Flynn because a few comments and someone on Goodreads, I think, told me that this is a really good mystery slash thriller. One of my favorite genres. So when I saw this book at my local used bookstore, I just could not help myself, wanted to support them, and I wanted to get my hands on this. Fresh from a brief stay at a psych hospital, reporter Camille faces a troubling assignment. She must return to her tiny hometown to cover the murders of two preteen girls. Dogged by her own demons, she must unravel the psychological puzzle of her own past if she wants to get the story and survive this homecoming. Very intrigued and it's so short, so I think it'll be really fast paced, but the reason why it makes me sad is because my local used bookstore, the one that I bought this from, I used to purchase books from her like in middle school like that's how close it was to where I grew up my high school my middle school they had like deals with her or something so like all the students got their required reading at this woman's really quaint so tiny like books all the way up to the ceiling we got them from that store and unfortunately last month she closed down she said that business was really slow and she just like couldn't do it and it just <laughs> I'm gonna start crying like <laughs> And it's not like I even knew her, but I just, that's such a cornerstone of a community. I wasn't even in town to be able to go to their closing sale or like say thank you or anything. Um, and that makes me really sad. So support your local bookstores, support your local used bookstores, cherish them while you have them. And I know that I'm so lucky. Like I am so lucky that I have amazing used bookstores near me. I know that that's not the case for everyone, but just, just, <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to a lighter note, I actually look insane. <laughs> I bought <laughs> I bought the first five installments of the Veronica Speedwell mystery series by Deanna Rayborn because <laughs> Caitlin, Six of Pages, just told me that she really liked it. So I went out and I bought all five. I went to two different used bookstores. The first one had these two, the first two. I started the first one and I was like, wow, I'm really enjoying it. So I went out to the second one and thankfully they had the other three. And so I have five of them. I think there are nine right now. I don't know how long the series is gonna go on. I'm loving it guys. I, I have never read banter this good. I'll say it, I'll say it again. Like I, <laughs> I have never read banter so clever and quick-witted and the chemistry is insane it's a slow burn the first book was a solid five stars and i just know i'm in for a wild ride and the covers they're all beautifully coordinated i think the fourth one is my favorite the green and the pink really just get me uh we won't talk about the fifth one because i think it is a little ugly the story is just so good so i'm not a historical romance gal i'm a historical fiction girl but just historical romances they tend to have like very tough to read language like I literally feel like my reading comprehension is that of a squirrel when I read a lot of historical romances, which is what turns me off to the genre. But this, it takes a little bit getting used to, but I wouldn't say it's the typical historical romance because it is really easy to read, but it still feels like a historical romance. So this is set in London in 1887. I'm just, 
I'm like giggling thinking about it. Veronica Speedwell is now orphaned from her aunts and she's free to travel the world. She is a professional butterfly scientist or something. She's like a professional explorer and she specializes in butterflies. But before she gets to travel the world, fate has other plans because Veronica has to thwart her own attempted abduction with the help of an ed enigmatic. See, like it's already the historical romance hater is like already popping out like these big words enigmatic <laughs> German Baron who offers her sanctuary in the care of his friend Stoker. <laughs> He's a reckless and bad-tempered natural historian. This is a historical romance plus a historical mystery because the Baron is unfortunately found murdered. So Veronica and Stoker decide to kind of team up and get to the bottom of what happened to the Baron and how it relates to Veronica. And I just want to tell you that Stoker has an eye patch. Is that enough? Because it was enough for me. There are so many quotes, so many annotations. I had a blast reading the first one. I was texting Caitlin so often, just losing my absolute about it. So I would highly, highly recommend picking up the Veronica Speedwell series. Just pick up the first five. <laughs> Just trust me. And what's cool about these is I had some credit when I donated some books to my used bookstore. So I got these books for like not a bad price at all, which is like makes it even more fun, even more rewarding. <laughs> and last but not least, I have two books that were so kindly sent to me by publishers. The first one I am stoked about, it is called In Universes by Emmett North. This is published by HarperCollins. So thank you guys so much over there. I'm really intrigued because if you have seen me talk about Blake Crouch. I love like the concept of reality being warped, time warps, parallel universes, that kind of sci-fi subgenre. So a profoundly imaginative debut novel set in numerous universes that follows a queer physicist's search for belonging across time and space. <laughs> what? And it's so short, you guys. So like, it has to pack a punch. It's queer, it's science fiction, there's time and space, parallel universes. I don't know what else there is to say. Beautiful cover. I am so excited about this one. Blending realism with science fiction in universes explores the thirst for genius, the fluidity of gender and identity, and the desire to lead a meaningful life. I feel like this book is gonna make me spiral into like some kind of existential crisis and I'm not even upset about it. Like I'm excited for it. So this sounds fantastic and it's a debut novel, which is so, so, so awesome. And my last book of this haul is Bugsy and Other Stories by Raphael Frumpkin. And thank you to Simon and Schuster for sending over this beaut of a novel. It's just like the high heel, the stiletto. What? This is a wildly imaginative story collection about queerness, neurodivergence, sexuality, and self-discovery. So I am very intrigued. Sexy and raw and compulsively readable, this collection offers a look at our innermost selves as we try to make sense of the world and our place in it. Aww. So I'm very thankful to Simon & Schuster and HarperCollins. I'm very thankful to my local used bookstores. And I'm very, 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 very thankful to my local Little Free Libraries, my local Little Free Library patrons, the people who use Little Free Library systems to donate and give back to their community. I love you. <laughs> I would lay my life on the line for you. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about because I want to know. I look, I look crazy. And if you're like, oh my God, Tia, your bookshelf is so sexy. Thank you. I know. <laughs> I just thrifted it and I posted a bookshelf reorganization. So feel free to check that out about how, well now it looks kind of weird because all these books are not on the shelves, but that video was really, really fun to make. This video was really fun to make. Thank you for being here and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>